that walks away with 30, 40 grand cash money. So there's the glory, there's the guap. It's all on the line. Eight months of hard work. It all comes down to this. Let's rock. And I want to remind you, RG, that we are playing salary cap mode. And that's a lot different than the folks at home that just fired up. They play regs, teams on teams. They get to be a GM. Yeah, absolutely, Scott. In the salary cap mode, that means that these guys aren't playing with the Giants versus the Dallas Cowboys. These guys are playing in a mode where they are in charge of the teams that they constructed. They have a certain salary cap. It's like daily fantasy football. You have a certain cap that you need to keep your team under, and you can use current NFL players and former NFL legends, each of them with a cap associated with them based on their skill level, and that's how you build your team. So if you see Michael Vick at quarterback instead of Eli Manning or Dak Prescott, that's why these guys are using teams that they built themselves. Photo will start with it first. He'll hand it off to Sweetness. My favorite player of all time. Get loose. Walter Payton will pick up the first down. And There's the offense. Can, and as you can see, that's a look at Spoto's offense. And more importantly, here's where you can see that's the tap cap total. You got to keep your cap under 1175. You got to fill 32 base positions and two flex. And if you're looking at Spoto, he spent 584 cap on his offense and 551 on his defense. Yeah, pretty balanced. I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle Walter Payton having success. And there is Sharp. Gets dispossessed. They got Michael Vick at quarterback, Mo. You got Walter Payton at running back. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Both these guys like to establish the run game. Both of them are averaging over 100 yards per game on the ground. One thing you'll notice with Drini Joka, he's got some of the best defensive stick in Madden. He makes those tackles. He wraps you up. He's not letting you get comfortable. Spoto wearing those he might have them. New York Giants uniforms while Drini is in the Cowboys. Let's take a look at his defense if we can. Yeah, speaking of Drini's defense, this is a look at his lineup. And one thing to pay attention, he's got a Ladanian Tomlinson at middle linebacker. That's because <laughs> in Ultimate Team, there's not just legends, there's also out of position players. So if you see Tomlinson making a play at linebacker, that's why it's a real, real fantasy style of mode of Madden where anything's possible. But the players love it because they're in complete control of their, not only their plays, but their rosters as well. What a read. These guys, none of these guys lucked into the final. These have been two of the most dominant players we've had in the tournament. Absolutely. These are the two best players are in this tournament. There's no debating that. Both of them fought to get here. Both of them, not not very many people have been able to establish a run. Only these two, these two players have, very, have had very much success establishing that run. Yeah, they've done it in two separate ways. Spoto's been doing it with Walter Payton and... Eventually, when Draney gets the ball, he's using a Joe Mixon that's really juiced up. And on the other end of that, neither one of these players are allowing players to run for run for very much. Draney, averaging 128 rush yards per game, only holding his opponents to 37 rush yards per game. Second and 13. We want to thank you for tuning in here tonight, wherever you might be. Thanks for making us a part of your Saturday. And a promising opening drive here for Spoto. Steps up in the pocket with Vic, and that is a laser beam to Sharp. What pace pick up the first Spoto. down. And there's his Papa, Papa Spoto, RG, in the crowd. Oh, how cool is that? Papa Spoto in the house gets to watch his 17 year old son try to bring home the bacon, all 40K of it. That's got to be an experience for Papa Spoto. He told us he's going to be using it toward college. I'd be buying a new Camaro or something like that, but hey, that's just me. I told you, he's beyond his years. And, and he'll get it to the 35-yard line. One thing I want to call out, Scott, you're going to see these players at the line of scrimmage. There's going to be a lot of motioning, audibling, and hot routing. And they're pretty much doing their best Peyton Manning oppression. They're able to do all of that different stuff. See the defense, get themselves in a play or play set up that they feel comfortable with. So when you see Vic directing traffic like he is now, that's what he's doing. I call it your best Peyton Manning impression. Vic here on second and nine. Swings it to the outside. Oh, no! He's gone. He's he gone. Won't take it to the house. Michael Vick's got wheels, though. If he doesn't have Vic, it's a pick six. Absolutely. Vic is the ultimate pick six stopper. But how about that? Drini Joko with a huge interception. Remember, he lost in the same exact championship game last year. He's trying to get a belt, trying to get over the hump. And he's got the momentum early on against Young Spoto. Take a look at it again here, Mo. Whoop. Look at that click on. So pure, so clean. Clicks on, goes and gets the ball, tries to make a move for six. 
luckily, Spoto, Michael Vick tackled him. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the difference between, you know, me at home and these guys. I mean, they, they want to be the one making the plays. They're not going to leave it up to the computer, the AI, to make a play. And that was a great example of what Sirius Mo said at the top of the show. Trini, one of the best players in the world, are clicking on, making plays with his user defender, and he just showed it for you, for the world to see here on ESPN2. That was a phenomenal pick. Got well, some space. His first possession, there's Joe Mixon. And he'll take it to the 27 yard line. We're gonna have second and inches. We talked a lot about the money. But you can speak to this, Mo. There's nothing like winning that belt. That's There's what it's all like about. It. There's absolutely nothing like it. The glory, everybody knowing and having to admit that you're the best player. There's no feeling like it. No, 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 no. It was a few years ago. We were in, here in San Francisco, and the man right beside me, Sirius Mo, beat Skimbo to lift the belt. Mix it. will pick up the first down. And a little bit more. He's going to get to the outside. Touchdown, Dreamy. And the biggest game of the season. Young Drini gets a little sticks in with Mixon after getting the stop. Amazing now, vision. Amazing oh. vision by Drini right there. Oh, second to none when it comes to running that ball on the ground. And if you remember, it was last year Drini was in this situation against Young Kiv in Dallas, Texas. Came up short. Lost in the final Ooh. possession, but this is sticky icky. Ooh wee. Let's go, man. Come on, man. One stop. We talked about it many times when he's got the bandana on. You don't want to play Drini. Yeah, there's Drini, and then there's Bandana Drini. He's bandana up, rocking his complexity gaming hoodie. That's pretty much his uniform. You, you football players put on their shoulder pads, your cleats, your gloves, your helmet. Trini puts on the bandana and the complexity hoodie before he goes to business. Well, there is OBJ. Trini is the youngest player to ever win a belt. If Spoto happens to win today, he would be the youngest to ever do it. At 17 years old, seven months. He's they go him. up He's top. OBJ, Whoa. and he overthrows him. I can't throw that on that. Taylor was step for step, though. It's a big, big drive for Spoto. You've already turned the ball over. You've already let up a touchdown. Drini's too good to let jump out in front like this and get all the momentum. You need to respond, and you need to respond early if the, you're the young in Mike Spoto. Down by a touchdown here in his second possession after throwing the pick. Yeah. And Vic has got nowhere to go. The freak gets in there with a sack, and it's third and 19. He's on aggressive, Mo. Uh-oh. Already, Drini establishing that aggressive. What that means is Spoto's going to have to fake snap, or Drini's D linemen are going to be with their ears pinned back, ready to get to the pass passer. Looks like, look at those D linemen fighting. Yeah. They, they call this in the NFL when I talk to NFL coaches. They, they call it the jet technique, Scott. There's the players' lounge. A lot of former belt winners in there. Strafens dancing a jig. Old oh. Doug the Pirate. And it's the unicorn of Madden. It's a punt, and that gives it back to Drini. Yes, Spoto, you've gotten yourself in a situation. Drini's going to get the ball to start the second half. He's up seven. He's got the rock. But we've seen Spoto play stinch defense all tournament long. If there's ever been a time for him to get that defense out here and get a stop, this is it. First and ten. Drini with Lamar Jackson at the helm, the former... Louisville Cardinal. And he's got time. Going for throw it away. And you'll notice in pre-play, Scott, Drini is pulling up his play art. So right now you're seeing the game from Drini's perspective. Remember, they're playing online. So when you see that play art right there, Spoto cannot see that. You're only seeing it from Drini's perspective and getting a look in the mind of the legendary young Drini when he's on offense. That's really valuable stuff. And there's a great grab past midfield at the 48-yard line. First completion of the game for Drini. And it looks like that's going to take us to the end of one. 40 grand, and that belt right there is on the Mo and RG on the call. Drini in control here. Pass midfield once again. 
And he's going to pitch it outside. There's Joe Mixon, the former Sooner. And he'll get dropped at the 41-yard line. And here's the thing. If you're Spoto, this is where you're going to go into full stinge mode. Drini is on the cusp of field goal range. He can make it two possessions, plus get the ball back to start the second half. If there was ever a time for you to really have to step up, this is it for Spoto. You need to get stingy right here, because once he gets in the field goal range, he's going to slow this game down, continue to milk that clock. Well, during the commercial break, I heard Papa Spoto giving his oh, no. son some encouragement. Oh, no. And oh. Mixon almost got out of that at the 26-yard line. And you know that all too well, Mo. You need Mama Mo at home sending those good vibes, right? Absolutely. Nothing better than having a, a, a gang behind you like your family. And if you guys are wondering how Drini's being so effective, he's in that New Orleans Saints playbook. He's not in the Dallas Cowboys playbook. He's in that Saints playbook. They got a ton of formations. You'll see Drini utilize a bunch of different formations like gun bunch, white trips weak out of shotgun, under center tight slots. It's a great playbook with a ton of formations. First and 10 at the 26 now. Lamar goes up under center. There's Roberts coming across in motion. And he'll hand it off to Mixon uh -oh. again. Yes. And it's a touchdown, Drini. The Red Sea parted. It's getting biblical, RG. Oh, my goodness. If you're Spoto, you are in trouble now. You're going up against one of the best players in the world for the last several years. A young man that only 19 years old is almost already clear $200,000. Now you're down 14 points. This is where you find out what you're all about when you back up against the wall. Let's take a look at this again. Just up the gut with Mixon. Early on, Dreamy getting it done on the on the pound game. Spoto only gave up 23 yards a game rushing. Dreamy already over 100. Remember, Spoto's coming off a semifinal where he beat one of the best Madden players of all time, and Michael Skimbo, who's won three belts. And Spoto's looking for his first, but he's in a deep hole here, down 14. Finally, he starts the fake snap just to see if that defensive line is unaggressive. Well, that's the best way to counter that jet technique. They're anxious to get after the quarterback. You fake snap, try to draw him off sides. Here goes Spoto, moving the rock a little bit. There you go, one play at a time, young Mike. Shannon Sharp makes his a third and 11. Trips to the right. Did such a good job early in the tournament getting Walter Payton involved, and now down 14, he's starting to be a gunslinger. Look for Moss in that corner out. Moss is on B. And he'll throw it anyway, oh. and Randy nearly caught it over the defender. Now here comes fourth down once again. Probably going to see him go for this. Spoto, if you're Spoto, you have to convert here. You do not want this game to get away from you in the first half. It just can't happen versus a player like Drini. Oh, my goodness. This is the biggest play of the game right here. If Spoto doesn't get this, Drini's already in field goal range. He'll just be able to milk clock, make it three possessions. You absolutely need this if you're Spoto. Fourth and 11. It's huge. Vic, clean pocket. Throws! Oh. And it's up again! Drini's all over Spoto right now. Oh, man, complexity game in own. Drini Joker from Washington, D.C., and Mo just said it. He is all over the youngin' from Staten Island with a huge pick. And Drini's looking to make history. You see him pumped up about it. The first ever to win a draft champion's belt. Now he's looking to become the get his first salary cap belt. And no player has ever won a belt in both of those modes. Trini looking to make history here at the Madden Ball. The great way to think about it is if you're a tennis fan, that's what we do with Madden. We make you play all the modes from regular to draft all the way through to salary cap. It'd be like a guy winning on grass, clay, you name it. It just never happens. That's a great way to explain it, Scott. He's got him. Touchdown. Touchdown, oh, Trini. Oh, 21 to nothing. Oh, and maybe the lights are too bright for the youngster, Spoto. Mo, oh, I got to ask you, have you ever been in this situation where you're in a huge game and you just find yourself in a huge deficit? And if so, what's your mentality? In Unfortunately, I have, RG. 
you got to take it one play at a time. I know you're down three possessions, down 21 points in a, in a little bit compressed of a game, but you have to take it one play at a time. You have to score on this drive. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. You've got to focus on getting points on you're the board. You're in a similar situation in Houston on, in Madden 17. Problem, the greatest of all time, had you way down, and you came all the way back to make it a game. So never say never in Madden. Absolutely, Scott. Vic swings it to the outside. There's OBJ. The question's going to be is at the young age of only 17 years old, is Spoto going to be able to do that and fight through this adversity, stay focused, and take it one drive at a time? And a lot of his energy comes from this trash talking, but there's nothing to talk about. It's 21 to nothing. For sure. Early on, though, I, I do like seeing him throw the small out route, get five yards, and then he, he's, he's keeping his poise. He still is using that fake snap feature to get draw Genie off sides. So from what I see right now, he's, he's still playing his game. For those that don't know, Scott, if you want a fake snap at the line of scrimmage, you simply press that RB button. It's going to give your opponent a little fake hike, try to draw him off sides with that. I'm a little biased here, but you got to work Walter Payton into your offense here at some point. Oh, the oh! side is picked off again for six. You get a pick. You get a pick. You get a pick. And this time it's for six. Unbelievable. I mean, uh, this is usually what Scott says, but you have small children watching. You may want to turn them yeah. away from the screen. This is getting ugly. This is not safe for work. Oh, man. This is devastating. If you're Spoto, you've been an underdog all tournament long. You fought so hard all season. And now you find yourself down 28 nothing, pick six against one of the best players in the world. We're not even in the second hey! half yet. Woo! Let's go! It's been a domination. Finally hands it off to Walter, and we hit the two-minute warning. Needs anything right now. Just momentum. One drive at a time. Get your seven up. Maybe get a stop. Get another seven. It's all you're thinking right now if you're Spoto. The problem is Drini is so proficient in the running game. I mean, he can just totally take the air out of the football when he gets it back. And you, you know, we talked about earlier going for it on fourth down, RG, and that's just because you have so many limited possessions in John Madden football. Yeah, only five-minute quarters. You need to take full advantage of them. You need to play a more aggressive style. And I'll tell you what, what what's going to discourage Spoto is he's going up against Drini. Like you guys said, he has a prolific run game, and you know Drini's too smart. He's not going to hike the ball without milking the clock and taking his time, and Spoto knows that, and that's got to discourage him tremendously right now. It makes being in this situation even worse than it is when you know your opponent's so stingy. He's not the type to give you opportunities to get back in the game. I mean, the disappointing thing for those that are just tuning in is Spoto was so dominant this week here at the Madden Bowl, beating some just unbelievable Madden players to get here. But Drini, he's different. He's built for this. And, and Drini, he really has been one of the best in the world. Mo said it at the top of the show. In two years, he's only been able to qualify for eight major events. He's made seven of those events and been in the championship in four of them. That is unheard of. That's impressive. That's the type of numbers where if he keeps continuing to do this year in and year out, he might not only be the best Madden player in Madden 19, eventually he may be the best Madden player there ever was if he keeps these credentials, banging out credentials like this. Fourth and 11. Oh, 1 11 man. to go here in the half. 28 to nothing. Vic. Just trying to get anything going. And it is a committee meeting at the quarterback. There's the freak again, Javon Curse. Now, the question here is if you're dreaming, you're up 28 nothing. It's only. 59 seconds left. How aggressive do you get here on offense? Do you just run the ball? I think we'll see three runs here in a field goal. I don't think he wants the to, to get have any chance to get any points before half. I think we'll see three runs here in a field goal. Yeah, he's playing the clock right now. He's no longer playing Spoto. It's yeah, him in the clock for the belt. He's going to let that play clock wind all the way down. One of the best at controlling this clock. 
huge aspect of competitive Madden. Mixon. I'm going back through my Madden database. I can't remember a final ever being like this. Yeah, I, this is just completely unexpected. We're hyped. We're ready for a battle. We're ready for Trina to be tested, but right now, no dice for Spoto. The crowd trying to get behind him a little bit. He finally stands up for himself a little bit on defense. This will make it 31 to nothing. It's a 47 yarder for Drini. And it is up and it is right down Main Street. We're here at the half. It is all Drini here in San Francisco. 31 to nothing. Team champ is with me. RG is down on the end. He's played a lot of Madden himself. And of course, works there at Tiburon in Orlando. And I'm Scott Cole, and we are ready for the second half to begin. And here's the bad news. Drini gets the ball. Yeah, I was about to say, Scott, right when you think things couldn't get any worse for young Spoto, he's got to start the second half giving it back to Drini. And this Joe Mixon, who just will not stop breaking tackles oh and doing work oh and getting sticky. Oh, man. When it rains, it pours. And you know what they got a saying in Madden football. What do you do when you see a man drowning? The answer they give you is you throw water on him. And right now, Drini throwing water all over poor young Spoto. Nearly 100 yards for Mixon, 10 carries for 99, including a couple touchdowns, and they'll go right back to him. He's over the century mark and a little more out to the 45. And, Mo, you're going to really see him work this clock. Absolutely. And another thing is you can just tell Spoto was never comfortable. You see him shifting his D-line around, and he's still not able to stop that run game. He was just never com comfortable in this game. It got away from him early. He never gave his defense a chance to br bring him back. Just didn't play very good offensively. You're going to see Drini use a lot of this clock throughout the second half. Well, Mo, this is a little different game than when you and Skimbo a couple years ago went into overtime here in San Francisco. Uh, that's the best Madden game I've ever been a part Detroit, of. Detroit! A little has a little bit to do with me winning too, but <laughs> you, you got a belt to prove it. That makes it a little nicer. Third and one. Lamar Jackson for Draney, and he'll go to the air. Ooh. It wide open. As Spoto sent the house. I mean, that's a great time to pass the ball. You got a huge cushion, and third and one. Everyone in the mama's sink and run. So you go ahead and pass it, get yourself a big chunk, and then just continue to milk this clock. He's winding it down to four or three seconds minimum every time, and that's just got to be devastating for Spoto. These guys combined for, I mean, talking all 16 players, all the games we played this week, these guys combined for 30% of the rushing yardage, and a lot of that coming from Drini. I'll tell you what, though. It, if you're young, Spoto, don't get your head down too much, regardless of what happens here. You're only 17 years old. You're still in high school. And you know what? You still guaranteed yourself $25,000 within this tournament. I don't know what you guys were doing when you were 17. I sure as heck wasn't making no $25,000. I was at 7-Eleven trying to afford a big goal. You know what I'm saying? Third and three. Oh, my Look at goodness. And Mixon just mixing it up. It's been diabolical from Drini, part of that Complexity Esports program. They actually have a partnership with the Dallas Cowboys, and that's why you see him with the star on his helmet. If we can, I'd like to pull up Drini's offense one more time if we have that graphic. I just want to show the people at home this offense that he's using in case anybody wants to go. Oh, they want to know. This, they want to know. <laughs> they want to know. Here team. it is. And there it is. And this item right here, this Joe Mixon, this is the guy getting busy. If you're an ultimate team, you better go to that auction house and find your little Mixon so you can get sticks in yourself. And there is Drini, the coach. We haven't said much of that. These guys... A lot of these guys have their own coach in the game where you can uh, add that to your ultimate team as well. It's, it's come a long way. 
And he's going to move the chains once again. Pull up your fours. Yeah, he's going to take this to the fourth quarter. It just flew by. Drini got the ball to start the second half. He has not relinquished. The greatest man player of all time. He's certainly is building a resume. Yeah, I think another year or two of success like this, he'll be right in that discussion. But he has a little bit more work to do, Scott, in my opinion, if he wants to get in the, the greatest of all time discussion. But he's well on his way. And that's the thing about Drini. He's got so many years left in him. Only 19 years old. And the, the eligibility now is 16 years old, but when he was a rookie, the number was 18. So if he was just a, a year or two early from maybe having an even deeper resume than we see now. Yeah, when he was 17 years old, he was considered on the underground as one of the best Madden players in the world already. He just wasn't old enough to compete at that time. And then his very next year, first year of eligibility being able to compete, he wins himself a belt, made the finals of this Madden ball last year, and here he is picking up right where he left off. A little well, better result. Since he's become a rookie on the scene, there's been eight majors. He's played in seven of them and made four of the eight finals. That's ridiculous. Uh, I think if you would tell somebody, hey, we have eight majors coming up, you're going to make four of them. I think they'd be excited, let alone make the finals of four of them. This kid's impressive, and like I said, I think he is going to be the player to watch out for for the next few years. And just to put that in perspective for the viewers at home, when we're talking about majors, these are tournaments that have thousands and thousands of people competing online you need to qualify through a leaderboard then you need to get through online elimination and then you make it to the live event so just making a major in itself is a huge accomplishment for any madden player and for him to make seven of them that's truly hall of fame type stuff spoto just trying to get something on the board here he has been completely shut out it's been those interceptions one was a pick six and it doesn't look like Drini's going to budge at all. I mean, if you're Spoto at this point, I, I think you want to get points. I don't think we've ever seen a shutout in a championship game in all of competitive Madden. And oh, my goodness. It's a hit stick fumble. And it'll go back to Drini. It's Ed Reed again. He's got an interception and now a fumble recovery. Drini trying to win his second belt. Currently holds the largest margin of victory in the MCS final. It was 40 to 19 over Young Kiv in last year's Madden Challenge. Oh, look at this <laughs> That's a margin of 21 points. He's well past that oh. in a 34 nothing to ball game. Something I just didn't see coming at all. Spoto's been playing great defense all tournament long, but Drini just had the remedy. Yeah, I hate to state the obvious, but oh my, look at Mixon continues. Ridiculous. 30, 20, 10, touchdown. Just give him the belt. What I was going to say is, I didn't mean to state the obvious, Scott, but Spoto has a better chance of drowning Aquaman than getting himself back in this ball game. 41 to nothing. I said earlier on, when I get home, I'm going to go get me an Eddie George from that Madden Ultimate Team store. I think it's going to be Joe Mixon instead. <laughs> Yeah, if you're at home and you play Madden Ultimate Team and you're trying to... Uh -oh. Dion! Oh! He might go 109 yards! One man to beat! Oh, no! And doesn't oh, no! have the stamina! The shutout lives! <laughs> Just demoralized. If you're Spoto, you've got to be proud of yourself. You're only 17 years old. You have to be proud of yourself. I wasn't doing anything like this when I was 17 years old, and I felt like I was the best Madden player. And oh, he OBJ dropped it. Jay dropped it. Oh, it's hanging around on his belly. Oh. We've seen some wildness. That would have been the wildest. Oh, man. Second and 10. I'm supposed to stay unbiased, but I'm rooting for him right here. Score a touchdown. I got to be honest. I that mean, makes the two of us. How stingy is Dreamy to hawk him down on that kick return? And, and, then, and then he picks it up. Kyle Fuller with the INT. And Madden, we rate our players on a 1 to 99 scale, 99 being the best. If Drini had a stingy rating, <laughs> it would be 99.
Mixon has 24 carries for 193 yards. I feel like he's broken that first tackle every single time, Scott. Yeah, his, his price on the auction house is skyrocketing right now. At this point, I'm just curious, if, are we going to see the first ever shutout in competitive Madden championship history at a major? Two-minute warning. It's been the most dominating, maybe the most dominating performance in the history of Madden. I'm talking at any level. <laughs> Especially with this. I mean, I'm not talking about me beating my brother on the couch. But, you know, okay. when it matters. On, on the, all right. On yeah. the, I was about to say, man, there's a lot of Madden games played out there in the world. You know, when I was on the ESPN show, Madden Nation, they sent me to Braylon Edwards' house. I think I beat him 97 to 3. <laughs> <laughs> it was all set, but even he was able to put up three. Reed, good move. Made a man miss. All right, let's go, Spoto. Let's get some point. We're not supposed to be biased as commentators, but Spoto's too good to have a donut up there on that board. He needs to put it together here. I'm calling my shot. Spoto's getting a touchdown this drive. <laughs> I'm calling my shot. Crowd here in the studio likes oh. that one, and he throws another pick. It's a user alert by out of position, LaDainian Tomlinson, the legend. I appreciate the Tony <laughs> Romo attempt, Mo, but I don't know, man. Six turnovers now, and this one's in the fridge. He didn't even give your shot time to settle in. It was like, I'm calling my <laughs> shot? No. I would really like to see a draw there, a halfback dive, kind of ease our way into it. Well, he's doubled up his opponents here in this tournament. He scored 115 points. He's only given up 63, and that's in the last four games. And I, I got to reiterate again. We've said it, and I want to continue to reiterate it. We're giving Spoto a little bit of a hard time right now, but this young man doesn't have anything to be ashamed of. Already secured $25,000, 17 years old. Very impressive. Yeah, that number I was giving you was in the four finals that he's been in, he has doubled opponents up. And he looks like he's going to win his second belt. And here comes the unicorn of Madden. There's no way he punts this. He's just, he's just giving, was that Ray Guy? Just giving him a little PT. Just giving him a little love. Give him a little screen time here on ESPN2. <laughs> the legend. And he is your champion. Shrini. Wins his second belt. He's won over $200,000 in only two years of playing John Madden football. And he's going to come on over and join us here at the desk. He's got that new era cap on. And yeah, man, you got to fit that through TSA all the way back to Washington, D.C., my friend. Come on over here and hang out with us, Drini. He had 203 rushing yards on the ground, 68 through the air. And he gets his second belt. And both of his belts in dominating fashion, one over young Kiv. And when you had that two hour break from the semifinals to now, Drini, yeah. did you ever imagine 41 to nothing? No. Uh not really, but, you know, I got to give a shout-out to Blocky for just uh, helping me out on defense just right there. Uh, shout-out to Decroft and J-Wall for giving me trips, tight end reps, and, you know, th those three. And, and Ghost, my fault. Let me get Ghost in there. So those guys really helped me out, so I'm just happy. Are you winded? What, what's going on here? I'm just I'm, – I just have a lot of emotion going on <laughs> right now. But. Well, you won your second belt. Yeah. I mean, like those losses in the finals really, really did, you know. I, I used to think, you know – if I'm going to make it to the finals, I ain't going to lose. I ain't going to lose. And those losses versus Kiv and Kratobin opened up my eyes. So hmm. I'm not, you know, overlooking anybody anymore. I thought Spoto, you know, great player. He beat Skimbo the game before. So I knew he was going to be a tough matchup. And, you know, I just locked in. I knew he was a tough opponent. So, you know, I'm just happy right now. Yeah, I would say so. I'm always amazed with you because this game doesn't – people don't even know this. This game doesn't even really fit your play style. Yeah. And you kind of made it work. I've said I think you're the best Madden player. When when the game comes out, you're who I look to to be the best Madden player, mm -hmm. and I can't do nothing but appreciate that. And I want to know how big of an adjustment was it? You know, this game's not really a run game type, type of feel. 
How did you find the good run plays and were able to expose your opponent's defense? I mean, it's obvious lab time and, uh, you know, making your roster. Uh, a lot of players like to use low cap running backs, a bad running back, and, you know, they really can't run the ball. So, you know, I spent a lot of cap on my running back to make sure, you know, I can, you know, control the clock, get a lot of yards on the run game. And, uh, you know, the run game definitely gets your opponent frustrated if you can get it going. So, you know, th that was my plan throughout the whole tournament to get the run game going. Hey, Trini, um, hey, take a look at your offense, and there's that Joe Mixon. At what point did you decide that this monster, Joe Mixon, was going to make the roster? Actually, you know, a day before the deadline, you know, I had 26 cap Mixon, which was like a, a, re a really bad running back in there because, you know, I thought I was like, I'm just going to pass the ball every play. just going to be like everyone else. But, you know, I figured out, you know, in the Madden Challenge when I won my championship, I was wondering, you know, what did I do that I'm not doing right now? Why did I win that tournament? And, you know, I got the run game going in that tournament. And if I had a 26 cap mix, and I wouldn't win this tournament. So I had to change that up and get the best mix. And, you know, he's going to break tackles for me. He's going to fall forward a lot. So, Well, we're going to see some Joe Mix in here, but we're also going to see some Pickens. Yeah. I mean, he kept throwing these to the outside, and you just clicked on and continued oh, no! to make play after play. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shoot, like I said, I was prepared for trips tight end. Uh, you know, Spot was a great player, but, you know, I feel like oh, there's no, better man. trips tight end players that, you know, I've played. So, you know, I felt like if I play good versus them, you know, I could play good versus them. Do you remember oh, a point in this game, Drini, where you knew it was over? At what point were you finally comfortable and did you realize, I'm going to win that oh, belt? No, Once I was up 14 with ball, and I, with ball and I knew I had ball at uh, half, I knew it was over. And I could tell by the body language from Spoto, like he was having his face down. <laughs> And he, I already knew he didn't even want, like he didn't want to play the game anymore. He was just like he was like forced to play, I guess. And you know, I knew I won rough from there. Well, Mixon was getting it done, and when it's all said and done, the confetti flied. You put on the cap, get a chance to pick up that belt. It's a lot heavier than folks think. But yeah. what about your road? I mean, Kratobin was strong, Little Man was strong, Spoda was. Really look like maybe the best player, no yeah. offense to you, and then you just come in and you blitz him. Yeah, I mean, shoot, I, I had to play a hell, hell of a road. Uh, Kratobin won the last championship. Lil Man was a finalist in the Classic, and Spoto just made a far run being one of the best players ever, really, uh, the round before. So I'm really happy, uh, and uh, I'm happy that I had a hell road to prove people that, yeah. you know. Well, this wasn't. is sort of our master's moment here. We don't have a green jacket or anything, but – uh, well, soon we'll be hearing from young Kiv. What did it mean uh, to come up short a year ago down in Dallas and now come back and sort of get some redemption? Uh, right after I lost to Kiv, I promise you, like, I literally went to the player's lounge on the couch. I literally just started crying, you know. I told people, like, it's never it, – the money obviously, you know, is good and all, but it's like – it's not why I'm playing. It's just I love Madden, and, you know, this stuff means a lot to me. So when I lose and I feel like I'm the best, it does hurt. So – you know, I just kept going and kept going, and eventually, you know, I won, the, I won another belt, so, yeah. Well, we know you're in the top five players, but there's starting to be some talk about could you be in the top three, maybe pushing for number one. Here's the MCS belt winner since Man 16. There you see Sirius Mo there at the challenge. That was here in San Francisco, but it was young Kiv a year ago. You talked about that loss to him, and he's hanging out with us here. He was last year's Madden 18 champ, and he joins us from the Players' Lounge. And Young Kiv, can you, I'm sure you can relate to the emotions that our man uh, Young Drini is going through right now. Yeah, the emotions when you win the biggest tournament of the year. It's the last tournament. It's the one everyone really playing for. And um, Drini, what, what, the, what did it feel like when you were up 14? And like you said, you thought you had it iced at that point. So yeah, I mean, what do you think uh, was going through your head at that point? Obviously, I knew, like, I'm, I was, like, pretty sure I was going to win that game. But, you know, I just kept telling myself to keep putting the pressure on. I don't just play conservative and uh, just just play my game and just play some defense. And I, I knew from there on I was going to win. So I just, just stuck mm -hmm. with my game plan. What's one thing that you've noticed in your game specifically over the last two years? Because I remember playing you in Madden 17, and you're not nearly the player you were now. You you are now you are still really good don't get me wrong but yeah. you've taken it to a whole nother level now well obviously you know i started off you know madden 17 man 16 i was obviously younger didn't even know anything really about the competitive community so uh that was just the beginning and then i just started watching players like problem 
you know, people streaming and seeing what they were doing. I just started copying and started imitating them. And then, you know, I got good enough to know stuff about the game and I learned stuff my, on my own. I just know so much now. And, uh, you know, playing great players obviously helps. You know, I, last year when I, you know, my first year in MCS, I played a lot versus Problem, played a lot versus Canes, two great players. And, you know, they, they put me in the right direction. Kev, thank you so much. Last year's champion. Uh, is there a rivalry between you guys? You seem pretty pretty kosher All with right. each other. He's good. He's a good dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, your defense was was the story uh, tonight. I mean, we could talk about Joe Mixon all we want, but it was really these interceptions that was the yeah. difference. Yeah, just like Lil Man and Lil Man, Spoto, Spoto literally drove down easily in the first drive, and they just keep, and he made the same mistake Lil Man did. Uh, they both made a good drive in the first draft and they just threw a pick to throw it all away and then I just took control from there. Uh, if they got three points or seven points really, you know, that the game could have been totally different. So, you know, that's something they got to learn from, I guess. Yeah, you you take pride in being one of the most balanced players in the league. You pay yeah. some bend, don't break. You can also force turnovers. Yeah. But once you get a lead, I, I really felt like when you were up 14 to nothing, it was GG. I mean, yeah. it was good games because your rush defense is, is absolutely phenomenal. And there you see some of the defensive players that you have. I know a lot of folks at home are going, now who's he got on defense? I got to go pick some of those guys yeah. up. So a lot of players uh, like to say, you know, don't spend a lot of cap on defense. You're not going to get stops either way. But I felt like if I spent a lot of cap, uh, spent, you know, actually if you see, like I'm actually really balanced, 571 cap on offense, 571 cap on defense. I feel like if you can, if you spend cap on defense, they'll make plays for you. Uh, it's just not on me, you know. I feel like you have to have the necessary players to play the way you want to. Well, are, are you the new GOAT? We got Problem out there. We got Skibbo. Where are you at in this list? Nah, I'm not the new GOAT yet. I, you, got, you got Mo beside you. He's a top five player. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. I mean, Watching Mo play in the Madden Challenge, that's what really started me off. That was the first time I watched uh, in Madden ever. So, you know, once I seen him win, I definitely wanted to get more into it. So, you know, that's shout what, out. What do you got to, I mean, do you have the goal of trying to be the greatest Madden player of all time? And what do you got to do? Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I have to obviously win more belts because, you know, there's Kimbo with three belts. I'm not even past him or even, you know, tied with him. So I can't really say I'm the GOAT right now. But in the future, you know, I, I've, I obviously want to pass him. Well, speaking of Skimbo and his three belts, you are now the second person ever, Drini, to take home two of those things. What does that mean to you, and what's the ultimate goal with this man, and do you want to be the best of all time? Yeah, I want to be the best of all time, but I also want to, you know, do stuff other than competitive, man. I want to grow my brand in uh, other places, so, you know, be prepared for some YouTube, Twitch, all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> Later yeah, on, he's, I, he's putting the home. plug out there. The two-time champ. He is your Madden 19 overall champ for the entire season. We've had an amazing...